white balance right there. There we go. Let's see how this one turned out. Hey, it turned out alright. I think my timer kept on running. It was, uh, that probably is the correct time. 887 minutes and 8 seconds. That's the total clock time. I think it's trying to reach zero. Yeah, check that out. First print, I ever tried to print something with a hinge all in one spot. <clears throat> we'll see how that worked out for me. This thing should come off here pretty easy. Yeah. A couple strings. Those look like I can knock them off pretty easy. It had built up this uh, edge here and this one too. Which is actually pretty cool to see that it even stayed together. For some reason it thought it had a lip up here. I don't know why it would have thought that. So it built it built up high enough to catch that edge, even though I'm going to cut it off. So I don't know why it thought it needed that, but I couldn't get it to go away. It had something to do with my drawing. So I'll just peel that off. Check at that single layer. It's pretty cool. Alright, so let me clean all these little burrs off a little bit, <clears throat> and then I'm going to stick a pin through here, and I'm going to see if we can break these connections loose, or if they're stuck together. So we're either going to break it, or it's going to work. We'll find out shortly. This up in here is actually hollow. I better keep these chips. This up in here is actually hollow. And, uh... I'll have to get in here and break these off, but should be able to pull them out of there without breaking anything. Because that's actually hollow. filler filled in but then I can just pop it out like that and now it's hollow but I printed it that way all right let's see if I can break his hinge loose without breaking the whole thing off I'm gonna work at it a little bit oh this is just a this is just a filler as well Again, this is why recycling plastic would be good. When I print stuff, I usually just print it so I don't have this at all. But occasionally I want to, and then I have to waste all the plastic. So when I get the recycler going, I don't have to worry about it. I can do as much infill and support as I need to. Clean that up pretty good later. Alright, let me get this cleaned up a little bit. <clears throat> we'll try to pull that apart. Alright, I just happened to have a piece of uh, um, polycarbonate. Well, no, that's... Uh, oh, geez, what's that called? Not polycarbonate. Uh, anyway, the, the rods that I used for the arms here just happened to be the right size of four millimeter hole that I had there so I pushed that in there and uh, we're gonna see if we can pop it apart without without breaking it here I'm going to uh, try to split these open with my knife They don't feel very separated. Let me get something 
Well, this might work even. I'm going to get something and stick it in here. I want to pry on it, but... Yeah, it don't look like it's going to come apart. It's just wanting to break. I'll have to work on it and see if I can get that apart. That's actually a hinge right there. Alright! It's been a while since we've been over at this bench. So, I got a bearing in there, and it is seated in there. It's got a lip inside. 13 millimeters round, I believe. I got a shaft here. One of the rubber wheels I'm using. <clears throat> it's got a little slot cut in it, or molded into it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the slot as a way to hold the wheel from hitting the back. And I'm going to get that pin that I put in there. I'm just going to push it in there. If I can get it in there, I'll have to bend it out that just a little. All right. So now it can't hit the back, and I have to put a shim on the front. But uh, now I have a bearing wheel, a wheel that's on a bearing out here. It's got a little lip right out here so it don't fall out. And I'll put a little shim in there so it doesn't move around, the wheel don't. It can move back but it shouldn't go past that. Shim the front and there you go. That's the, the top half, the clamp half. Well, the only thing I could find for shims was uh, connector ends. It's the only thing that I could find was small enough. So I'm using these connector ends as my, as my shims. So I gotta get the center of this bearing to hit the edge of that wheel for support. Otherwise it's gonna rub the uh, bearing. There you go. That's one down. Let's complete the other part. Alright, now I originally was going to take one of these stepper motors that I took out of a printer or whatever. And uh, it was going to mount right here with these holes that I got already made in there. And that'd be it. Um, after I got done doing some testing, I found out that these stepper motors aren't going to work. These are seven and a half degree stepper motors. The type of motor that the printer uses, the ones that I use, are 1.8 degrees. So I'm going to be using this 1.8 degree stepper motor instead. That means I gotta make it fit in here. So I will uh, be just taking the mill and milling out these parts to make these fit in here. The holes are different. I could mill it straight up, just make me a plate, which is probably what I'll end up doing. Um, I could mill it straight in and still get the screws on there. But that's what I get for uh, not testing the motor out before I got done. Otherwise, I would just bolt this on here and that'd be it. 
this piece goes on here and my wheels aren't in the right place but you get the idea the down pressure here would hold the uh, wheels together I can make that adjustment over here so there you go um, so I'll be modifying this to get this motor in the right spot here however I'll need to do that probably just mill that whole slot out it'll be alright unfortunately that's what I'm gonna have to do it looks like the wheels line up good though uh huh lost my pin oh there it is I am just gonna use this as my pin this is actually that uh, carbon fiber rod and uh, <clears throat> the other thing I got is these studs that I showed you and I think what I'm going to do is put these on the end of my soldering iron, get them hot, and just push them in there and hope for the best. So I'm not going to film doing that, but we'll see what happens. Well, maybe I will film it. I got my soldering, soldering iron set to uh, 600 degrees. So we're going we're gonna to let this bad boy heat up. And uh, I'm going to push it in this, see if I can get it square. Just like that. Do the other one, see if it works as good as that one did. I may actually have to. I want to do it now, but I may. I should have pushed it in even further. See if this one works as good. Let it get nice and hot first. Look, I'm making a new way of uh, inserting threaded parts into my thing. Now I got threads in there. We'll see if uh, those hold up to par. I may need to put some glue over the top just to make sure they stay in there well cut your finger well those little <clears throat> rivet mandrel type of uh, things worked out pretty well I think I'll put a uh, two little bitty well I might just leave it like that and this mounts well, again I gotta put the other motor on there but originally like that gives you just a little bit of pressure on there so I'll get all this mounted on here I'm probably going to end up making a plate and just milling out the corners there so this motor fits in there and just mount that whole plate right on there it'll be alright should have thought of that before I printed it uh, but I thought this was going to work oh well live and learn live and learn moving on Oh, all right, guys. So uh, here's basically what I got. I made a plate and was able to mount that motor in there. Okay, just a quick little plate on the front. Added a. Uh, I had to make a little bushing basically to mount this to the shaft. Um, I will take this off and show you what it looks like because I'm gonna put a dab of glue on there so it stays in the right spot pretty simple this is just a holding pin and then my wheel what I did is I cut the back out um, originally I just slotted it and drilled the hole but I had to do it this way to get it square and then just added this uh, added this uh, basically a piece of shaft with a uh, two holes in it that are threaded 
and uh, the shaft here has a hole in it and basically the back side of this wheel fits inside of those screws they're actually set screws to hold this shaft in place but they also act to uh, hold the wheel from slipping and then this just goes through here to hold it from falling off that's kinda how that works pretty simple um, so that's how that is I'll put that back together in a second and this is actually the circuit that I'm going to be using now currently I'm actually using one of the um, A4889 um, stepper motor drivers from the 3D printer 5 volt regulator um, this is a 555 timer which I'll have a timer circuit on here with a potentiometer that'll be my speed control and then I have dip switches here for the um, amount of stepping that I want to do so I have an enable and I have a uh, you can do um, quarter, eighth, um, half and sixteenth steps so a half you can do a half, a quarter, an eighth, and a sixteenth, depending on how you set these dip switches. I have it set to sixteen, um, so basically it ripples the uh, the output and steps it uh, in sixteenths instead of whole steps. Um, basically, that takes a one point eight um, a one point eight degree stepper motor and divides it by sixteen per step. So it really fine tune that baby. But you got to use a higher frequency to drive it because you're half stepping it. So that's my circuit. Now again, I will be having a 555 timer circuit, but for all purposes of demonstration, I currently have it hooked up to my signal generator. Okay. So basically, uh, hook power to it, turn on my signal generator, and we'll spin it up. See it spinning? I gotta put my set back on there, but I'm gonna glue that on there first. And then basically, my plastic will just be pulled out of my cooler. Pretty simple, huh? And that's really it. I mean, that's the whole basic, uh, the whole basic setup that I've got here. I'm gonna add a little. Uh, guiding system in the front and in the back so that it stays in the center of the wheels. Um, I did groove this wheel. Let's see if I can get it in a shot. See how that wheel has a groove cut in it? You can see there's a hole between the two wheels there. That's supposed to help me out, but I may have to groove that even bigger or make some guides. Probably gonna end up making some guides. So that's it. Next is to test it, but now you can uh, now you can see it running. Now again with my with my frequency I can adjust how fast they spin. So I can go really slow. I can really get to cruising. Ah my wheel's gonna fall off. Okay, so there you go. Just for all demonstration purposes, let me go ahead and show you what uh, the difference looks like on the stepping degrees. So, let me put it on one step. Okay, this is one step per rev. Okay, then if I go to a half step, it's half that. If I go to, uh, I believe, I believe that's a quarter step. That's an eighth step, and that's a sixteenth step. Barely moving. So if I speed it up, on the sixteenth step and I and I bring it back down to the eighth it speeds up see that so it's half and then if I do it again it 
Okay, so basically the higher the frequency has to go in, but pretty basic, and uh, that's how the motor driver actually work on the 3D printer. Pretty sweet little deals. Um, these are fairly cheap. Cheapest I found them was about uh, um, with the heat sinks. Um, I just ordered five of them because I happened to burn up one of my spares, and so I'm using this off my printer. So I hope I don't burn it up. Um, the cheapest I found it from China was like uh, thirty, no, twenty three dollars. That's pretty cheap, but they they look pretty cheap, so I hope they work. Um, the general ones are about ten bucks a piece, which is fairly decent. Um, with a heat sink and a cooling fan, you get up to two amps per coil, so four amps for chip, and they are a bipolar driver system. So there you go. Now it's time to go test this thing and actually see how it functions. Peace out guys. See you soon.